for a generation that's been raised on safe sex PSAs and debates about condoms in schools, coitus interruptus, otherwise known as the pull-out method or the withdraw method, is still sometimes the preferred form of birth control for some. The negative side effects that come from, with, from hormonal birth control and the aversion of men to condoms have led one New York Magazine writer to refer to this as the pull-out generation. We should also say that some women have aversion to condoms as well. Let's not single out the men here. Depending on the demographic that we're talking about here, we have, it's a lifestyle choice. And for some people, it isn't necessarily a choice. But withdrawal and what, you know, has been, you know, the pullout, it's been around for a millennia for women. So it isn't something that's necessarily only just for a certain age group. Many girls will use it when they can't have access to birth control. Sometimes people will use it when they're not more comfortable with their partner's body, but there's like, you know, no pregnancy period. This is something, it's not a new concept. Amanda, why do you think the attitudes towards why this is being done are changing? The attitudes towards the pull-out method are changing, and do you think that they're changing? You know, I don't know that they're changing that much. I think most people still correctly perceive it as a very high-risk form of contraception. But there was one study done a couple of years ago by the Guttmacher that found that in actual use, withdrawal, and this is around the world, so this wasn't just a U.S. only thing, mm -hmm. was about as effective as condoms. And that's actual, typical use. Mm -hmm. um, perfect use, there was a little bit more, if you use condoms perfectly every time versus withdrawal perfectly every time, condoms were a little bit better. But um, most people, when they use condoms as their main form of birth control, skip them a lot. And um, so they found that withdrawal um, which people often skip a lot as well, is roughly as, as popular as condoms. Wait, are, and, you, saying, are, are, you, are you saying that you think people with, uh, skip on withdrawing? Yes. Yes, okay. yes. That's, um, that is the, what the statistics show, is if you use withdrawal as your main form of birth control, you're not going to use it every time. Failing to actually withdraw in the midst of sex seems wildly irresponsible to me. Carly, what do you think about that? <laughs> Um, I think, you know, sometimes it happens as an accident, probably. Um, I don't think, I think men probably because they're out of control of whether the woman would choose to get an abortion or plan B would probably, if they were smart, not for, you know, intentionally forget to pull out because then they might have, you know, no option to say, I don't want this child if the woman were to get pregnant and have it. Um, but I don't know, like everyone else said, I just feel like this is something that's just old news, you know, and the article seemed to be sensationalizing something that when I read it, I was like, wow, yeah, we've all known this since the dawn of time. I'm sure that people have been using the pull-out method since, you know, people understood that sperm could potentially impregnate a woman. And Megan, do you think that the prevalence of plan B, prevalence may be in the incorrect term here, but the access, the more, the, the fact that there's more access to plan B, it's less of a frowned upon um, uh, option. Do you think that that has led to also the the possibly the further use of the of the withdrawal method? No, I I don't. I think that people have been using the pull out method as a form of birth control for thousands of years. Thousands you know? of years. Yes, it's yes. it's an effective form. And as much as we may <laughs> say like, oh, it's only seventy five percent effective. That's as effective as some condom use and as the diaphragm or the cervical cap, which it's a form of birth control. Mm -hmm. I would, thank you. Go ahead. Go. I mean, the rhythm. I mean, the rhythm method is what many couples have used. I mean, it's the one that certain ah. religions say, "Oh, it's okay." But I mean, bottom line is, know your body. And these women are saying in this article, and it may be news to the person who's writing it, but in this article, it's like, okay, we want to take more about our health, and we don't want to put things into our bodies that aren't what we want. But Lou, isn't that, isn't that an incredible message given that in the 60s and 70s, particularly in the 70s, birth control was seen as such a, a, a humongous leap forward for women, uh, for women's rights and women sort of taking control of their own sexuality? Well, now we're seeing birth control as a, as a somewhat of a limiter in terms of their uh, taking control of their own bodies. I don't think, I don't I don't think, think it's a limiter, yeah. but I do think yeah. that there's no question that when it first came out, what was perceived as women having control over their pregnancy. And if you, once you have control of that, you have more control of your life. Bottom line, you have brain and you have, you know, uterus. Use both of them.